Hello, hello, and welcome back to another episode of the Tea with Tina podcast. On today's episode, we are chatting about a very common question that I get and that I see floating around the internet, and that is, what do you eat before and after a workout? What's good to eat before and after a workout, pre and post workout meals? So I'm going to preface this by saying don't stress it too much. Um, Don't freak out. It doesn't have to be perfect. And definitely listen to your body because everybody's different. What might work for one person might not work for you. You may notice a certain type of meal really gives you energy and then another one makes you feel sluggish. You are not right or wrong or broken. Um, Simply just do what makes you feel good. Okay, and stick with that. So first, we're going to talk about the impact of nutrition on performance and recovery. Honestly, if you go into a workout, I know there's a lot of things on fasted cardio and things, and like, that's cool. If you do it, you do you. But really, properly fueling, and sometimes even if you adjust your meals, especially if you work out a little bit more intensely, or maybe you're like an endurance runner, you're training for a marathon or something like that, or you're lifting really heavy, really the meal timing of these things can help too. So like, maybe you plan, you know, one of your big meals and like a good chunk of your calories around your workout um, because you know right after you work out you're like super hungry and the next time you normally eat is like a couple hours later but you can shift your meals around so like a bulk of your energy is around that workout um, and then you have your breakfast and your dinner or whatever the rest of your meals for the day so keep that in mind as well because sometimes the timing of things can really impact how you feel I know I do this like I tend to have a bigger breakfast and a bigger dinner I usually work out with my in-person clients I will work out after I'm done training them so I'll have breakfast I'll usually train a couple clients and by then I'm hungry but I didn't want to pack a full lunch um, (laughs) because it's annoying to carry it around and maybe I don't even want to eat a whole meal because I'm going to be working out so I carry something with me um, that I can just grab and eat really quick I have my pre-workout and then I usually have like something after my workout as well and that's something to you know kind of get me through until dinner so something to think about everybody's situation is going to be totally different like if you're coming from work and maybe you know it's five o'clock six o'clock and you ate lunch around one you're definitely one going to want to pack some sort of pre-workout snack because you're going to be hungry for sure if you don't go home to eat dinner or eat food so there's little things like that that you have to think about depending on your schedule and when you're going to work out and you know what you want to eat and all that fun stuff so that's number one but let's kind of dive into pre-workout nutrition So pre-workout stuff is generally, (laughs) pre-workout stuff, but pre-workout stuff is generally carbohydrate based because carbs are quick burning energy. Carbs and sugars, they burn up fast. And that's what we want when we go to trains. It's going to give us that quick energy to get us through a workout. Um, You may have even heard of like intro workout nutrition, which is often like crazy stuff like candy. Um, Rice Krispies, you may have seen the trend. There's all kinds of like sour strips, you know, gummy bears, whatever it is. And again, that's around that idea of, you know, if you're feeling kind of low and drained in the middle of your workout, you can pull out these quick carbs because they will quite instantly burn off Um, and that's another reason too why a lot of active people can get away with eating like more carbs and sugars because they tend to burn them all off if you're eating all that the carbs and sugary stuff they're not inherently bad it's when you pair that with with inactivity so when you're inactive and then you eat all those carbs and sugars it's gonna get stored as fat and it's gonna get stored in your body because you did not do any activity to burn it off so that's when it becomes a problem. So again, another thing, another perspective, okay? And for most people, I would say, even if you don't feel hungry, I would definitely try to train your body to eat a little bit of food because I know a big thing I hear is, is like, I'm not hungry in the morning and or I'm not really hungry before a workout. It's, it's good to try to eat something, a handful of nuts, um, a handful of fruit, you know, whatever it may be to just kind of get you going, get your energy going um, because it will really make a difference in your energy. I know me, sometimes I get on a banana kick. For some reason for me, bananas are... Are the best pre-workout ever <laughs> for me like I don't know what it is in it um, it just gives me this amazing boost of energy and I feel really good and I feel like I could push like I don't know it's just bananas so I, I love my bananas which actually leads me into some ideas 
for your pre-workout um, foods would be a banana. Now you can do just like straight carbs, but you can also kind of make a complete meal as well. There's nothing wrong with that. Again, it depends on personal preference. I would definitely keep it on the lighter side. And as far as meal timing, again, that kind of goes around your schedule. But usually if you're anywhere between 30 minutes to about two hours prior to your workout, you should be fine. If it's gonna be a bigger meal, um, definitely keep it farther away two hours, but if it's something smaller, you could definitely have it closer to your workout. And, you know, again, keep in mind, if maybe time restrictions don't allow you to have it, you know, farther out, you might have to settle for a smaller, quicker meal closer to your workout. Um, or if you can only do it farther away, have a bigger meal. So little things like that, it's going to be different, as you can see, based off of you, but definitely a banana, you can do some protein or yeah, protein with the peanut butter in there. Just be mindful of fats. You don't want a ton of fat because fat can um, takes longer to digest and it can make you feel a little sluggish. So again, it depends on the person, but a banana with a little bit of peanut butter should be okay. I love doing rice cakes because they're straight carbs. They're light and they're airy. You can definitely do that with peanut butter or Greek yogurt or hummus. Throw a couple dark chocolate chips on there. There's a lot of varieties for rice cakes. You can make them savory or sweet. Um, toast would be another good one. You could do toast. I mean, you could do avocado toast, um, ricotta or cottage cheese toast with some fruit. You know, you can do something light like that. Um, fruit and Greek yogurt is a great option, uh, or even something as simple as like a bar. And I wouldn't maybe go for a protein bar because we want to reserve the protein for post workout. Um, I would do more of like a carby based bar, a granola bar, nutrition bar, even like a cliff bar or something like that. Now, I will say though, some protein bars are more balanced than straight protein. It's hard to find a straight protein or a high protein bar. A lot of them, if you look, they have a lot of carbs and a lot of fats in them for like the amount of calories that you get. So more often than not, you should be okay eating something like that. Um, but again, just listen to your body and your preferences. Um, but again, we do want it to be quick and easily digestible. We don't want it to be something that's going to sit in our stomach and make us feel sluggish and not want to work out. Um, the goal is to give us energy to get us through the workout. Okay. This is just the person I am. I took a brief break for those. Oh, I'm sorry. I took a brief break for those of you um, watching on YouTube. I'm sorry, I'm not trying to make this ASMR, but I'm eating some raspberries. This is another great pre-workout snack. I'm actually going to go for a walk outside after I'm done recording this. So this is going to be my pre-workout. When I tell you that I slammed back a six ounce container of raspberries, I slammed back a six ounce container of raspberries. I devoured those. Um, it's probably best I didn't get that on tape. <laughs> But here we are. Now, moving on to the next thing, we're going to talk about hydration in general, but hydration before exercise as I sip on my Stanley. Let's take a little water break here. I have noticed at first, like once you start to drink water, it can feel like you're pushing it because you're kind of building your tolerance. You're going to pee a lot more. I don't know what it is, but within the past couple months, I have really upped my water gain like before I was struggling to get 60 to 80 ounces and it wasn't always like that like before I was chugging probably like 100 120 now I'm back up to like that 100 120 because this Stanley's like 40 ounces and I at least fill it three times a day so that's 120 um but I can tell you I feel amazing my skin feels plump and hydrated when I chug that water I mean I kind of have to force myself and be like Tina chug this water but once i do i just literally feel so great it helps flush out everything in your body um especially if you eat a lot of salt or, or you know you take vitamins and you're trying to get the extra stuff out it's the way to go and just make sure to look at your pee um if it's super clear you want it to be slightly yellow um that means you're too hydrated if it's super clear so just adjust it based off of you and how you feel but in general, hydration before exercise is super important because if we're dehydrated, we tend to feel sluggish. Um, our muscles can cramp up easier. That is a big thing. Potassium is another reason that our lack of potassium is a reason that our muscles will cramp up. So if you find that during exercise, eating that banana pre-workout can help and chugging some water. Um, definitely drinking water throughout your workout as well because you will be sweating. But 
it can really impact performance. So you can feel that muscle weakness and that tiredness and like your your workouts are dragging and maybe you just need to drink more water. <laughs> so definitely think about that. But another thing too is what we don't think about is that water by itself is okay. We don't think about the electrolytes. And I know there's like about a billion electrolyte drinks out there nowadays between Gatorade and Powerade and there's natural versions and non-natural versions and we have like you know, all these crazy drinks. Um, A lot of them are pumped filled with extra like vitamins and minerals, which is cool. Just be mindful of how many you're intaking because if you do that with a multivitamin, with whatever else you eat and drink in a day, you could be getting too much of something. Um, So please just be cautious of that. I actually stopped drinking Power Armor, or is it Power Armor? Body Armor. (laughs) Body Armor because of that because they have a lot of nutrients in there and some of them, most of them you can like pee out and it's fine. But a couple of them, when I combined it with my multivitamin and whatever else I was eating for the day, I was actually going over and I did not want any adverse side effects. So I just decided to pull back on that. Um, So again, be mindful, especially if you're getting like headaches or something like that, that can be a contributor. Um, But even something just like adding some salt and some sugars to your water, you can actually make your own little electrolyte drink or try to get something that's a little bit more natural like i don't think gatorade like the normal gatorades have like all this added crap into it i think it really is just like a regular plain electrolyte drink um pedialyte you know there's all kinds of different options that you could do the little stick packs um but i will say if you eat like a regular diet you'll probably be okay um because salt is good if we over drink too much water we can really flush all of that out of our systems like i know my husband when he was in the middle east um he it was like 125 plus degrees there so they were drinking a ton of water but they were also sweating it out and they were actually forced to drink water that had electrolyte stuff in it he said it tasted disgusting it was like salty and gross but it prevented them from passing out because there were guys that drank straight water there and they passed out because they were low on electrolytes so i always think about that like if you're someone who eats particularly clean or lower sodium you may benefit and you're active you may benefit from adding you know some additional electrolytes in there just to kind of boost how you feel um because you're probably not getting enough in if you tend to eat more clean but if you eat you know like a a nice balance 80 20 and you do have some salt in your food um and sugars and things like that you should be okay okay so we have that now we'll move on to post workout nutrition so post workouts a little bit different you know you finished your workout you're tired your muscles are all torn up from um, they have all these micro tears in them because you worked them up so now the goal of the post-workout meal the pre-workout meal was to fuel and energize and power through post-workout is to you know replenish glycogen repair your muscle tissue and ultimately prevent fatigue if we you know fuel up post-workout that can actually help us feel like not so tired if that's ever happened to you i know it's happened to me (laughs) so that is going to be the goal there now there is this rumor about an, an anabolic window and the more and more research that they do they say it's not as necessary like oh you have to eat within 30 minutes or an hour or you're not going to get the benefits that's not necessarily true again i think this comes down to preference you know if you can (laughs) don't kill yourself trying to drive home to you know fit in your anabolic window or chug like a protein shake immediately after a workout because you need to get that um, nutrients right away like i think you know as long as it's within a couple hours you should be okay but generally i like to follow that same rule 30 30 minutes to two hours i say is a good rule of thumb before and after a workout for that window it's enough time that by the time your body digests something um you're really going to start to feel the effects of it uh both ways so i think that's a good window okay (laughs) um some ideal post-workout foods so really i obviously want protein to be the star here because it's going to help you build and you most likely didn't have protein a ton of protein before your workout but definitely protein after the general rule of thumb is carbs before protein after but you can still keep the meal balanced so a lot of people actually just eat a full meal post 
workout, which is fine because you really like killed your body, you crushed it, you, you did a good workout. So eating a full meal will help kind of just replenish and restore everything and not give you any negative side effects. Um, your appetite might be elevated because you worked so hard, you burned all those calories. So that is a great way. So if you have your dinner or your lunch or whatever, or your breakfast, depending on what time of day you work out, you know, plan to have your meal after your workout and just have a little snack beforehand to give you that boost. Um, We do want something, you know, adding in some antioxidants wouldn't hurt because that does help in reducing inflammation, helps pull out inflammation from the body. Of course, recharging with some hydration. I know I sometimes will just keep it simple and do a protein shake. Um, Again, it depends on context. Like if I'm on the run and you know, this is kind of like my in-between meal, I'll do a protein shake. But if maybe I had a workout and then I can go home and eat a full lunch or a full dinner, I'll do that. Okay, so we do have that. Then we have hydration after exercise, which, you know, again, I think this is really going to help with muscle cramping, the hydration post-workout. Obviously, we want to stay hydrated throughout the day, but I do have some people that they say like a couple hours after they work out, they experience this muscle cramping. Um, And it could be a couple different things, but I would always like recommend start with the potassium, you know, eat a banana every day, see how you feel and, you know, drink enough water and, and see where you stand with that first before like investigating other things. And of course, we want to make sure that we have the electrolytes. Like you can sip on the electrolytes throughout the workout just to assure that you're refueling, you're recharging. Um, But again, you can also do it after, especially if it's like a hot day, you were sweating a lot, um, all that stuff, because you're going to need to replenish all of that fluid that you lost. Okay. Now that kind of about sums it up. Like I said, I didn't want to get super specific of like you have to do this and this but it is more of a generic guideline and that's where it comes down to the individual variation we want it to fit you and your specific needs again this is where you look at your lifestyle take the basic information i gave you look at how your life is and how you can kind of adjust those things your pre-workout meal your post-workout meal the timing of things to fit you and your workout schedule maybe you need to move your workout schedule around a little bit you find that it will make your life a little bit easier to be able to get these things in and that's fine too you know you learn more about yourself okay but ultimately listen to your body you might need to experiment around a little bit and you're like oh this meal makes me feel like crap i'm not doing that again or like oh i felt so sluggish or Oh, I'm still hungry. You know, there's a lot of different things that you can play around with. So I hope that you found this episode helpful because it is a very common question that I get. Um, But if you enjoyed it, feel free to subscribe or turn on notifications or reminders. I don't even know how that works. Um, But just so you would never miss an episode. I know on Spotify, you can follow podcasts. It would also help me a lot if you left a review. It just lets more people see this podcast um, so we can share the wealth. All right, and until next time, guys, hope you have a great rest of your day, and bye for now.